Okay, so for a little bit of info to better understand, I live on a very large property. The, uh, the house was cheaply built and pretty run down. So it was a pretty good price for a growing family. We had one of those above ground pools in the backyard, and due to the size of the house and the property, and being surrounded by woods, it was a pretty secluded place. But, uh, anyway. We had some neighbor kids come by often, and they were nice, I guess. Although the way the three of them always stuck so close to each other kind of weirded me out. So, we were in the pool one day. It was hot out, and my parents and the neighbor's parents were in the front yard completely opposite of where the pool was at. Talking about whatever it was adults talked about then. Now, I at the time had two older siblings, one of which was my older sister, who was fiercely protective over me, and being her youngest and physically disabled sister, it made me feel good knowing she looked out for me. But uh, to continue the rest of the story, my sister had gotten out of the pool for some snack or drinks or maybe she just had to pee? Who knows. That left me and the three neighbor kids there. An older boy, maybe around 13, and two younger girls, probably between 8 and 10 at the time. I was just a happy-go-lucky six-year-old at the time, so I didn't notice that she left. I was just splashing around in my little pool floaty, having a blast on such a hot summer day. The older boy, the one I never really spoke to because we just didn't have much in common, had swam by me and asked, so, where'd your sister go? I looked around and shrugged, and went back to happily splashing. He looked around for a minute. Now that I think about it, he was probably looking for anyone nearby, and asked me, How long can you hold your breath? He knew I had very weak lungs due to a health problem, but I was such a naive and optimistic kid, I replied, Forever! Not even a second after responding in my high-pitched, squeaky voice was I suddenly pushed down underwater. I didn't know what happened. Why was I being held down? Why weren't his sisters helping me? What did I do to piss this kid off? I struggled for a few seconds, kicking and desperately trying to get his hands off me, holding me down under the water. When all I see up, when all I see looking up is a huge splash. Suddenly I'm above water, and I'm choking and spitting out water and feel like I might die. I try to gain composure and make sense of what all just happened in this short 30 second time frame. When I see my sister, who had apparently saw me struggling on her way back outside, and rushed to the pool and dove off the ladder to tackle the completely psychotic child who had just planned to drown me after the whole ordeal was over. I remember my sister wrapping me in a towel and running me to my parents on the other side of the property. After that, things are kind of fuzzy. I think I went into shock. That was the last time those neighbors ever came over. And when I asked my parents about those children, they said the neighbors only had two daughters. This may not seem creepy to you, but it freaked me out for a long time. At the beginning of January 2014, I met this guy on Omegle. He said his name was Valentine, but liked to be called Connor. He lived in Texas, and he was my age. We chatted for a while, and right off the bat, he was telling me how ugly he was, and how his mother slapped him around, and how he hated his little brother because of how rude he was. Being the overly compassionate and sensitive person I am, I felt bad for him, and that day, we began dating. He told me how he was a Satanist, and I didn't really care, since I firmly believe in choosing whatever religion you feel comfortable with. Honestly, I think I should have taken that as a warning. We were together three months 
and I got fed up with his bullshit when he told me he was driving to my state to see me, and then stood me up. In our first month, we were on a Skype call, and he was in a dark closet with a single lit black candle, and he was reading demonic spells off of a notebook. When I broke up with him, he didn't contact me for months. And one day he did. He called me. I was a little weirded out by it, but I answered with a polite hello. What are you doing? It seemed like a fairly nice question, so no flags were raised. I replied with, watching the He cut me off mid-sentence. Cool. I missed you. I kinda rose a bit of an eyebrow at that and just shook it off. Oh, um, cool? I didn't know how to respond. You know, I ran away five times to go to your house, but my mom caught me every time. I still have the bear you sent me for Valentine's Day. You remember it? I still sleep with it, even though my, uh, some relative, I can't remember which one in particular, dog tore it up. Oh, that's too bad. I'm sorry. I replied, a little creeped out. I want to see you. I'll run away again for you. I was now on edge and replied with a quick lie. I don't think my new boyfriend would like that. Valentine got real quiet and then hung up. I looked at my phone in confusion and shrugged and went back to watching what I was watching. Summer break was almost at the end, and Valentine called me again. Hey. He sounded weird. Hey, I replied, too preoccupied to really pay attention to him. I need to tell you something. I'm gonna do something bad. He whispered. I stopped what I was doing and listened to him. What's wrong? I asked. When school starts again. I'm going to shoot up my school. I almost didn't believe him at first. So I asked him what he meant. Me and my friends have some guns already. When school starts, we're going to shoot up my middle school and kill everyone. I think Satan will be happy with my deeds. I immediately began talking him down, and at the same time, I was texting my mother everything he said. After half an hour of talking him down, he got quiet and asked me about my boyfriend. I lied and said we had broken up, and Valentine seemed quite happy about it. He said he wouldn't shoot anyone and hung up. My mother and I were debating whether or not to call the police and ended up not doing it. There were never any middle school shootings in Texas, so he never did it. But after that... He hasn't contacted me since. So, creepy satanic ex? Let's never meet again. My cousin asked me to babysit her children while her husband and her went to work. I didn't mind since I was off and I love spending time with them. I live across the street from a neighborhood park and if you live in the city, you know the park is extremely populated due to the summer camps they offer. Well, as soon as I walked out the door from my house, my niece noticed my friend, Sophie, was parking her car. She usually comes over on my days off since we hardly hang out, because we both have busy schedules. I told her I was headed to the park since the weather was nice, and the kids can play outside, so she tagged along. We didn't realize how hot it was until we were there for about an hour. So I thought it was time for us to go. We were making our way to the water fountain when I looked up and noticed a man holding his camera. He looked about 60 years old and kind of like your typical tourist. He had a sun hat, map tucked in his pocket, backpack, and a camera case. The guy was busy taking pictures of a couple of kids from the summer camp program. I know from working in events and photography that if you're trying to take pictures of children, 
you have to have the consent of their guardian because you don't want to look like a creeper. The camp counselors noticed this guy as well and were talking among themselves to see who was going to talk to the guy. None of them did. Since the guy figured out that he was being watched, he gathered his things and quickly tried to walk away. I knew it was wrong, and I told my friend to watch my niece and nephew. I walked up to the guy and I informed him that he wasn't supposed to take pictures of children without their parents' consent. He said he wasn't taking pictures of anyone but of the scenery. I called out his bullshit and I asked him to show me the pictures. He became extremely nervous and said no. He left me no choice but to call the police. As I've said before, due to it being summer, the parks were populated. There is a lot of foot and car patrols. It took less than a minute for the nearest officer to come. I told him the situation and he asked the guy to delete the pictures. The guy started to argue with the officer, but he couldn't win since the camp counselors didn't give consent. The guy finally, willingly, gave the officer his camera and reviewed the pictures. The guy was taking pictures of the kids, but he was zoomed into their private areas and faces. The officer kept going through the pictures and discovered older pictures of children like this, and discovered pictures of older children like this, but close up. The guy was arrested, and they took my statement and the counselor's. It made me sick to my stomach to know what happened while I was there with my six-year-old niece and one-year-old nephew. I hope he gets what he deserves. <laughs>